Hi children, welcome to Aunt Eileen's Story Corner. Nice to see you all. Hi, where is everybody? Let's see, who's over there? Joey, hi, and Alex, and Jacob, and Emma, and Jackson, and Callum, and Maya, and Noah, Noah number one, and Brett, and Maisie, and Caden, and Colby, and Jack, and Capria, and Julian, and Wesson, and Colt, and Noah number two, and Camilla, and Raphael, and the three Michelles, and River, and Wesley, and Grayson. Hi, Grayson. And Calvin, and Annie, and Liam, and Kellen, and Desmond, and Ruby, and Harry, and Heidi, and Mary, and Owen, and Cleo, and Tutu, and Wilder, and Henry, and Ian, and Sean, and Celine, and little Beatrice, and Ella, and Tate, and Kyrie, and Kreider. Hi, everybody. Let's get ready for a story, shall we? Open, shut them, open, shut them. Give a little clap, clap, clap. Open, shut them, open, shut them. Put them in your lap, lap, lap. There's our story box. What do you think's inside? A book, of course. And can you see my shirt? You see what color it is? It's purple. And that's in honor of today's story. Harold and the Purple Crayon. I hope you like it. Harold and the Purple Crayon by Crockett Johnson. One evening, after thinking it over for some time, Harold decided to go for a walk in the moonlight. There wasn't any moon, and Harold needed a moon for a walk in the moonlight, and he needed something to walk on. He made a long, straight path so he wouldn't get lost, and he set up on his walk, taking his big purple crayon with him. But he didn't seem to be getting anywhere on the long straight path, so he left the path for a shortcut across a field, and the moon went with him. The shortcut led right to where Harold thought a forest ought to be. He didn't want to get lost in the woods, so he made a very small forest with just one tree in it. It turned out to be an apple tree. The apples would be very tasty, Harold thought, when they got red. So he put a frightening dragon under the tree to guard the apples. It was a terribly frightening dragon. It even fr frightened Harold. He backed away, his hand holding the purple crayon shook. Suddenly, he realized what was happening. But by then, Harold was over his head in an ocean. He came up thinking fast, and in no time he was climbing aboard a trim little boat. He quickly set sail, and the moon sailed along with him. After he had sailed long enough, Harold made land without much trouble. He stepped ashore on a beach, wondering where he was. The sandy beach reminded Harold of picnics, and the thought of picnics made him hungry, so he laid out a nice, simple picnic lunch. There was nothing but pie, but there were all nine kinds of pie that Harold liked best. When Harold finished his picnic, there was quite a lot left. He hated to see so much delicious pie go to waste. So Harold left a very hungry moose and a deserving porcupine to finish it up. And off he went looking for a hill to climb 
to see where he was. Harold knew that the higher up he went, the farther he could see, so he decided to make the hill into a mountain. If he went high enough, he thought, he could see the window of his bedroom. He was tired and he felt he ought to be getting to bed. He hoped he could see his bedroom window from the top of the mountain. But as he looked down over the other side, he slipped, and there wasn't any other side of the mountain. He was falling in thin air. But luckily, he kept his wits and his purple crayon. He made a balloon, and he grabbed onto it. And he made a basket under the balloon, big enough to stand in. He had a fine view of the balloon, but he couldn't see his window. He couldn't even see a house. So he made a house with windows, and he landed the balloon on the grass in the front yard. None of the windows was his window. He tried to think where his window ought to be. He made some more windows. He made a big building full of windows. He made lots of buildings full of windows. He made a whole city full of windows. But none of the windows was his window. He couldn't think where it might be. He decided to ask a policeman. The policeman pointed the way Harold was going anyway, but Harold thanked him. And he walked along with the moon, wishing he was in his room and in bed. And suddenly, Harold remembered. He remembered where his window was when there was a moon. It was always right around the moon. And then Harold made his bed. He got in it and drew up the covers. The purple crayon dropped on the floor and Harold dropped off to sleep. Well, good things come in small packages, don't they? That's a pretty little book, but a great little story. And you can see that my version of it is really old <laughs> and a little worn out. I think we dropped it in the bathtub once. And you can see there's a little Puss in Boots action on there. And it's for my daughter, Mariah, who is also an artist. And I wanted to honor her with Harold's story, because Harold's a good artist, isn't he? So is Mariah. Okay, it's time to say goodbye. So shall we do our cleanup song? Of all you learn here, remember this the best. Don't hurt each other and clean up your mess. Take a nap every day, wash before you eat, hold hands, stick together, look before you cross the street. And remember the seed in the little paper cup. First the root goes down and then the plant grows up. So long. See you next time.